Hi, this is Osho. Welcome back to Angels' Scaly Wings. We are working our way through the Aftermath mod, and this is a Dean's Root. Probably going to be the last part of this mod, which has been pretty good. So let's get into it. We're going on a date with a Dean. She's going to practice her flying. Since we're going to the lake, I figured I might as well bring my swimsuit. I also brought a kite on the way over, because there was a good breeze today. After a little bit of searching, I found a Dean sitting under the tree by the edge of the water. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? You liar. What you talking about? You said there was no beach here. Well, I guess I meant an ocean beach. This is just a big lake, really. It's still a beach, nonetheless. Yeah, that's a fair point. What are you wearing? It's called a swimsuit, hence the name. It's specialised clothing used by humans for when they want to swim. Are you sure that's socially acceptable? You said that humans don't usually show much skin to other people. In this case, it's okay. But if I was wearing this in some place like a restaurant, then yeah, they'd probably kick me out. Human social norms are so confusing. Yeah, you'll get used to it. Okay, so what's that in your hands? It's a kite. Okay, so what do you do with that? You fly it. Wait, so you can fly with that thing? No, 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 I don't fly. It's just the kite. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to see a human flying. Believe me, every human wishes they could fly. Well, show me what the thing does. I need your help with it then. What do you want me to do? Just take it and walk back with it for a bit. Oh, and be careful with the claws, it can tear easily. Oh, okay. After walking a couple of metres backwards, the Dean stopped. Okay, now hold it up. Got it. When the kite caught enough wind, the Dean let go and it ascended quickly. Wow, that's kind of cool. That's actually a lot similar to how dragons like me take flight. Sometimes we need a good gust of wind to help us off the ground. Interesting. Now what do we do? We just hold on to the string and let it fly. It doesn't do anything else. It just moves with the wind. Oh, I see. The kite shifted a few times in the air, making a few zigzag patterns. You know, maybe this could give me ideas for my stunt routines. Do you want to try? Yeah. I handed the spool to Adine as she carefully put her wing claws around the handles. Oh, the kite spool slipped out of her claws and rolled on the sand for a moment. Maybe if I, um, she sat down in front of the spool and grasped it with her talons, this time holding it a lot easier. She sure looked funny when grabbing things with her feet. I casually walked behind her so she wouldn't see the smirk on my face. I know what you're thinking. Then what am I thinking? I look goofy holding things with my feet, right? Oh, don't be ridiculous. She was bang on though. The wind grew stronger and the kite began to dart back and forth through the sky. It was getting strong enough to where it pulled Adine's legs forward slightly. Eventually, the kite took a nosedive and ploughed straight into the sand. Ah oh man, I had a good hold of it too. It's okay, that was pretty good for a first time. Thanks, that was actually kind of fun. And like I said, maybe if I studied the kite, I can think of some cool new stunts to do. I fetched the kite and set it down with the rest of my staff, and when I turned around, I saw Adine scanning the ground. Looking for stones to skip? Yeah, how did you know? Considering the way I showed you to do it before, I don't think you'd have any other reason to look for anything on the ground. How about this one? She picked a smooth round stone that was extremely flat. Perfect. Adine took the stone into her talons and swung her leg forward. The stone bounced off the surface of the water five times. Wow, nice throw. Yeah, I think that's a new record for me. Hey, hey you two. Oh, hey Bryce. What's up? Well, well, great minds think alike. What? You're going to practice stunt flying too? What? No, I bet we had the same idea of coming to the lake today. I was being sarcastic. Oh, oh I see. Smart ass. This shit always has something funny to say. It's nice to see you again, Chief. Please, just call me Bryce. Besides, I'm not a Chief anymore anyway. Really? Why is that? Well, since I'm part of the City Guard now, I have to take orders from the higher-ups. Plus, there's no Chief rank at all. But I did get a promotion last week, so now I'm a Sergeant. Good to hear. Well, you'll always be Chief Bryce to us. That's right. Yeah, thanks. See. So, you were talking about stunt flying practice, mind if I watch? Of course not, I always appreciate an audience. So it's what you got Angel. Angel? Yeah, that's my stage name. 
That's a coincidence. The squad that I'm part of is called Angel Squad. Really? Wow. What are the odds? An angel is one of those mythical human things with wings, right? Yeah, and they're said to be a symbol of grace and beauty. Well then, it suits you, Adine. Okay, Bryce, are you are you making the moves on Adine like this? I'll stop it. Adine took off over the lake to do her warm-up routine, while Bryce and I sat on the edge of the water to watch her. Damn, that girl sure is a piece of eye candy. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Oh, you're interested in her too, are you? Maybe I am. I guess we'll have to see which one of us she goes for. Adine's first stunt was a simple cyclone manoeuvre, in which she spun in wide circles that slowly got smaller as she descended toward the surface of the lake. It was like I was back in the dragon's world all over again. Adine's next move involved a series of backflips down to the surface of the water. This time she didn't crash. You know, I've actually noticed that you and Adine hang out a lot. Are you, uh... So far, she's only ever acknowledged me as a friend. But yeah, I do like her. Then, I guess I'll give you the first shot at getting good with her. Well, she did let me scrub her back in the shower once. What? You're lying, dude. No, no, she injured her wing during a practice routine back in your world. She was hurt to the point where she needed me to reach her back. I mean, I didn't shower with her, per se, but still. That's bullshit. I want to scrub her back. And her front. And, uh, Bryce, stop it. Sorry, I'm just so jealous of you right now. Adine continued on with her practice for about half an hour, and then she called out to us. Here's the finisher, Angel's Blessing. She made several loops in a fluid path before corkscrewing up high and falling back down into a drill manoeuvre. I was watching with a huge grin on my face until Adine ploughed straight into the water. Uh, I don't think that was supposed to happen. Well, okay, she can always try again. No, 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 you don't understand. Adine's in trouble right now. Her kind of terrible swimmers, not to mention that higher before, might have hurt her in some way. My nerves went on edge as I realised Adine may very well be- What the hell are you doing? Monologue in your head or something, we gotta go save her. Okay, call for an ambulance, I'll go out and get her. Right. Go, 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 go. I swam out to where Adine failed to find her. She hadn't resurfaced, and I wasn't sure how deep the water was where she landed. So either A, she was drowning, or B, the impact from the fall might have hurt her, or worse. I dove beneath the surface to find her. Okay, Adine, how you doing? I swam for a little bit before finding her at the bit of the lake. My heart stopped as I realised that she wasn't moving. Quickly, I grabbed her and pulled her up to the surface, struggling to keep my own head above the water. That's it, drag her out, get her out of there. As I reached the shore, I laid Adine on her back. She was still unresponsive. Please, no. I put my ear to Adine's chest, but I couldn't detect a heartbeat. I wasted no time, and I started CPR. Come on, you can do it, dude. All of a sudden, Adine jerked awake, spitting up water with every cough she let out. Oh man. Adine, are you okay? What, what happened? What do you remember? The last thing I remember was doing that trick, and then going face first into the water. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I was trying so hard to swim up, but my wings were creating too much drag on the upward motion that it was pushing me down instead. I think I'm okay now though. Thank god, he had us worried for a moment there. I'm sorry. Don't be, we're just glad that you're alive. Paramedics arrived and gave Adina a checkup. Miraculously, she wasn't severely injured, but they recommended she take it easy for the rest of the day. Do you think you can handle it from here? I need to get going. Okay, I'll look after her. Okay, you do that. Bye now. Bye. Why does this always happen to me? What do you mean? Every time I try my best move, I end up crashing and hurting or almost killing myself. What am I doing wrong? Uh, Dean, relax. You can't expect to get it perfect right off the bat. I know, I just don't want to make a bad first impression on my sponsor. Just, just do some basics and build up to it. They said they'd give you a personal trainer, right? They probably don't expect you to be perfect, nor should they. The trainer will be there to help you get your stunts right. But my trainer will also be judging me based on my performance. I don't want them to be too lenient, but I don't want them to be too harsh either. Well, you know, you can fire a personal trainer if you don't like them, right? You'll be the one calling the shots, not the other way around. I know how trainers work. But at this rate, I'll need all the support I can get to succeed. 
Well, no matter what happens, just know you always have my support. Thanks, you always know the right thing to say. No problem. Now, let's get you home, shall we? Yeah. After that near-death experience, oh no! What's up? One of the lenses of my goggles is broken. It must have happened when I crashed into the water. These were my favourite pair. I'm sure we can replace the lens. Really? It shouldn't be that hard. There are plenty of places to go to fix broken eyewear, goggles included. Good, I don't want to replace the entire pair. Okay, you're gonna get her goggles fixed up. And she didn't die, so that's a bonus. Since ramen and sandwiches were all that Adine had for food, we decided to order some burgers on the way to the apartment. She really seemed to enjoy the burgers we had in our world, compared to the ones from hers. So, this is beef, right? That's right, but the animal it comes from is called a cow. It tastes just like aurochs meat. That shouldn't be a surprise, since they're both bovine animals. Actually, this might taste better than aurochs. I'm glad you like it. You were right, I can't believe how close together our civilizations are, even in the food we eat. And I'm still amazed that we've actually been on the same planet the whole time. How far into the future did you say we were again? 65 million years? Wow, that's, that's kind of something. I know, it's probably the greatest coincidence in history. Actually, it might not be a coincidence at all. What do you mean? Did I ever tell you the thing about your creation myth? What about it? It's actually completely true. It, it is. Yeah, a human did create the dragons. And you met her. That woman in the cloak? Yeah, she's the one who created you. And I met her? That's probably the equivalent to meeting the most famous dragon in the world. So everything about dragons being inspired by humans is true as well. From the food, to the language, and to the buildings. That's amazing. Do humans have any sports that have to do with flying? I mean, we used to, before the solar flare incident. We had special vehicles called planes that we would use to travel long distances. Some, however, were used for stunt flying competitions. So my skills are based on these planes, are they? I guess you could say that, yeah. What about sky dancing? Do any of these planes dance? Sky dancing? I'll take it as a no then. Sky dancing is like stunt flying, only you're, um, well, dancing instead of doing tricks. Have you ever done that before? Once or twice, but sky dancing is usually more of a thing for couples or dragons who want to get another's attention. So it's a mating dance. Not all the time, no. It's just like normal dancing, there's all kinds of ways to go about it. And it just so happens that romantic sky dances are the most common. Oh, I see. We cleaned up our trash and settled onto the couch for a moment. Thanks for saving me today again. I thought I was done for. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Thinking about what happened today reminded me of my previous experiences with the Dean. Although I wasn't directly there when it happened, I remember the timeline where Adine crashed and died at the competition. And like a chain reaction, remembering that timeline reminded me of another timeline with Adine. Uh, are you okay? You seem a bit uneasy? It's nothing, I'm just remembering some previous timelines that I shared with you. The one where I died at the competition, right? Right, I didn't see it, but Sebastian told me about it the day it happened. And then there was a timeline where it was only you and I that confronted Reza. And he killed me, didn't he? No, but he injured you, and escaped with the generator we needed to stop the comet. And then he cut off my access to humanity's portal before I could go after him. Which meant I couldn't save the dragons from being destroyed by the comet. The last conversation you and I had in that timeline is something I can never forget. Okay, what did we talk about? You reminded me of when I told you there would always be another year for you to perform at the stunt competition. But because of the comet, you didn't have another year to try it. I felt awful about it, I gave a new hope, only to realise that it had been all taken away. So I told myself I would never give up until I gave you that second chance. It actually led me to a timeline where another incarnation of me was there. So there were two of you at once? Yep. Oh wow. Izumi, the human that helped to stop Reza, died in the previous timeline, so I had to fill in her shoes for the next timeline. I did Izumi's work, while the other me worked on the Reza investigation. The other me ended up staying in that timeline, while I continued on with my mission. 
That's kind of insane. All that time travel stuff must have been really confusing. It was, and I'm honestly glad I don't have to do it anymore. Because now I can focus on being with you. Yeah, now we can be best friends forever. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Well, you know, what, what did I do? Do you not want to be friends with me? Did I do something to make you hate me? I'm sorry for what I did. No, it's not that, it's just, um, never mind. Okay, if you don't want to be friends anymore, just say it. But I just want to know why. Of course I still want to be friends with you. I just, I just want to know something. What's that? Do you remember when I helped you in the shower and then spent the night at your place? Yeah. The last thing I wanted to do right now was be too direct with her, but I wasn't sure how to go about it. You know what? It's, it's a silly question. Forget I said anything. N no, I won't. I want you to be honest with me. I promise I'll reserve my judgement. Okay, I'm just not sure. Just ask. Why did you ask me to do it? What? Were you really just asking me for a favour? Or was there something else? I'm pretty sure I already know the answer, but you insisted I ask anyway. Well, it, it was only a favour. But now that you've brought it up, there, there's something else I've been wanting to tell you. You see, I've always had a bit of a crush on you. Really? Yeah, ever since the first day we hung out together, I really enjoyed being around you. But it felt like something that would be frowned upon. I thought it was just a fleeting fancy, and it would pass eventually. But as we continued to spend time together, I realised that my feelings were all too real, and I had no idea how you would have reacted if I told you. I felt like you would be grossed out that a dragon had a crush on a human. So I decided to pretend I didn't have those feelings for you, because I didn't want to lose you as a friend. But it's more than just a crush now, I'm in love with you. Wow, I didn't expect that much. Awkward, right? Actually, no, because I feel the same way about you. You do? Yeah, in effect, I've been going through the exact same feelings that you have. I wasn't sure if you would feel the same way for me, but I'm in love with you too. She jumped forward and embraced me with absolute excitement, nearly knocking me off my feet. This just keeps getting better and better. You're so sweet and nice. And you're probably the funniest person I've ever met. To me, those qualities make the perfect partner. So, I guess you did mean to kiss me yesterday. Oh yeah, that, um... Well, whatever, the beans are already spilled. But there is one more thing I was wondering. Okay, what's that? I mean, I know we just told each other how we feel, but, um... You want me to spend the night with you? Um, I'll take it as a yes. And maybe shower together again? This time, you know, like the, the two of us and stuff. I wouldn't miss it for the world. You said sharing together was a thing for couples, right? Yeah, yeah it is. And we're a couple now, aren't we? Yes we are. Then let's do it. Okay, into the shower we go. Adine turned on the water and got into the shower. It wasn't as big as her old one, but it was still big enough for the both of us. As I was taking off my clothes, I saw Adine's face flush red. What? Nothing. I've just never seen you without that much clothes before. You didn't seem to bat an eyelid when other dragons walk around nude. But you say humans only undress in front of those they're intimate with? Well, I certainly can't shower in my clothes, can I? I guess I didn't think about that. Um, are you okay? Well, everything's kind of happening fast. I'm a bit flustered here. Am I making you uncomfortable? No, I guess I'm still coming to grips with the fact that, um, we're getting intimate and shit. If you want to stop, we can stop. No way, I'm the one who suggested this. I'm just a little bit nervous, that's all. I've never done this before. We'll only go as far as you're comfortable with. Then, get in here. I joined Adine in the shower, and she leaned against me, resting her head on my shoulder, and once again, wrapping her wings around me. Yeah, I put my own arms around her waist, as I felt her heart fluttering against my chest. I guess Anna was right about us, wasn't she? I know we teased her for being with Remy, but we weren't even a thing until a few minutes ago. She didn't have to deflect the embarrassment onto us. Of course she didn't have to, she wanted to, it's just kind of the person she is. I guess I can't blame her really, her life has been pretty rough from what she's told me. 
everyone's got their struggles and we all vent them in our own ways. But at least she isn't as bad as she used to be. Sorry for bringing down the mood. You didn't bring down the mood, we're just talking. Let's talk about something else then. Okay. So, what do you like about me? What's not to like? Give me the details. Uh, beautiful, sweet, sexy. Uh, let's go with sweet. I get that a lot. Well, it is the truth. I could say the same thing about you though. Seriously, the way you made Vara purr last night was an overdose of cuteness. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. With one hand, I gently stroked the back of her neck. My other hand found itself stroking her side. Hey, that tickles. Yeah, I know. I showed no mercy. I began quickly running my fingers on the ticklish spots. Stop it. Adine tried to wiggle free from my grip, but I had a good hold of her. Our wrestling caused us to fall over in the shower. Damn, when are you going to learn? We gazed into each other's eyes as water trickled down from her body onto mine. Before we knew it, our lips made contact and I lost myself in the moment. Adine pulled back to look into my eyes again. She still seemed a little nervous. Funny how I went from almost drowning in the lake to completely drowning in this moment. You're sure we're not moving too fast for you? It's too late now. I'm enjoying this. Me too. I took Adine's claws and ran my thumb over them. She looked closer at my thumb and seemed to notice something odd about it. She lifted my hand to look at it and her jaw dropped. Oh wow, your hands! What? What's wrong with my hands? Adine turned off the water and held my hands palm up to look at them. They were wrinkled from being in the water for so long. We should get a doctor to check this out. It looks really bad. I let out a subtle chuckle at Adine's misunderstanding. Okay, nothing to worry about. This is kind of normal. Really? Yeah, it's a natural reaction for humans when they've been in the water for an extended time. Wow, I was worried that there was something in the water that was causing this. No, from what I've heard, this happens to help our grip when our hands are wet. Oh, I see. So, I stopped our shower over nothing. It's okay, the water was getting cold anyway. The warmth of our shower relaxed us to a point where, even while after the water was off, we stayed inside. We didn't really care about the shower anymore, we were more interested in each other. Adine laid her head on my chest and closed her eyes. Meanwhile, I started massaging her back. Yeah, right there, that's the spot. My motions grew more firm as I made my way up and down the Dean's back. Oh yeah, does that feel good? Yeah, that's it, good massage. I didn't know you were so good at giving these. Neither did I. We sat back up and paused for a moment, and then Adine grabbed the soap and sponge. Turn around. Why? It's my turn to scrub your back. I chuckled and turned around just as she asked, and almost immediately I felt the sponge as Adine moved it around my back. She intentionally went slow to save the moment. I turned my head to look at her and saw that she was examining my backside. So you really don't have a tail, not even a stub? Did you think I was lying or something? You never know. You were hoping at least one thing about that sitcom was true, wasn't you? You can't blame a girl for hoping, can you? As Adine started washing down lower, I shifted a little. She was right, first times can make one a bit nervous. Do you like it? I mean, I think I'm actually a little unsure of this myself. Oh, I can make you nervous too, can I? I think I can get behind that. As she finished her playful motions, she put the sponge aside and leaned back against the wall behind her. I turned around and took a moment to gaze at her beautiful figure. I might be sweet, but I could be spicy as well. Yeah, I can see that. Well, what are you waiting for? Come and get me. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. That was so much better than I expected. You can say that again. After getting out of the shower and drying off, we settled onto Adine's bed and she wrapped herself around me. You're like a big scaly blanket with your wings. And you're like a squishy cuddle toy with your soft skin. Hello? What's up? Best couple forever? Best couple forever. We'd finally done it. Dragonkind is safe, humanity is on the road to recovery, and Nadine was now following her dream of becoming an ace stunt flyer. For the first time in what seems like an eternity, I was looking forward to the future. 
And I think we have reached the end of a Dean section of the Aftermath mod. That was a fun mod. Lots of little scenarios that we can kind of check out and explore. Just one little thing I thought we could do before we, we sign off. Is uh, with the hide and seek. They said that they would make us do a dare. And if we can do the dare. I'm not sure. Before we kind of grabbed a Dean. And we kind of put pizza on our face and stuff like that. But I thought maybe if we deliberately failed it. What would they do to me? I'm kind of worried. I wonder what they would do to me. Okay, I lost hide and seek. They won. What an unsurprising turn of events. Now, what do we do with the human? Oh, so now that I'm a loser, you reduce me to my species again. I see how it is. Well, you did lose. I dare you to... to um... Hmm, this is harder than I thought. Oh, I've got a great idea. Okay, I'm scared. As it should. Okay, let's hear it. I dare you to kiss a Dean. Okay. On the lips. Hey, don't drag me into this. This is his dare, not mine. Kiss, 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 kiss. Fine. I walked over to a Dean and looked her straight in the eyes. Okay, let's get this over with. I slowly but tenderly locked lips with a Dean in the background. I could hear Amelie blatantly chanting something about sitting in a tree. Yeah, you embarrassed the both of us. I hope you're happy, Anna. I sure am. Okay, let's clean up. Okay, so that's what happens if you fail the hide and the seek. And we're done. This is a show signing off, and hopefully I will see you next time.